All right, Frank, we are halfway through the Stanley Cup Finals. Tampa leading the Cinderella Montreal Canadiens three games to one in the series. What are your impressions so far? Rob, uh, you know, ca- call it bias, call it saltiness, call it whatever, because, you know, Joe and I are Lee fans, and we, we talked about this a lot. It's, you know, we told you so. It, it's, it's, it's exactly what we thought was going to happen. You have a ju- use the word juggernaut only. <laughs> you have a team that is the best in the league by far and is in a world unto themselves with the Tampa Bay Lightning just steamrolling the Montreal Canadiens. And I'm going to put that, you know, at the game four as well. They were all over Montreal. And, you know, we'll get to game four in a second. But up to this point, it, it's been a no-brainer. It, 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 anybody that says this is an even series, you're, you're being biased. You're not watching what we're watching. We're watching a style that, you know, I, I compare Tampa Bay to a chameleon. You, you want to play that in-your-face, tight-checking style that the Islanders play? Tampa can play it. You want, you want to open the game up and, and play transitional hockey? Tampa Bay can play it. Knowing that they have arguably the best goal in the world, best defenseman in the world, and, you know, two of the top uh, top maybe 10 players in the world, two draw the point. Hey, you want to go, they'll go. And they're mm-hmm. successful doing it. And what I love about that team is they're consistently rolling four lines and getting production from that third line. And that mm-hmm. third line is leading the team in hits, uh, time on ice in terms of the uh, special teams as well. Like, it, it, it's amazing to see. And a uh, hint, where I'm going with this, both Goudreau and Coleman are free agents, and they're not going back. They, they, they can't <laughs> afford it unless, you know, somehow. Well, I guess I shouldn't say that because somehow yeah. they always make their find the themselves. The cap wizard. It, it's the whole thing, Rob, is we, uh, you know, we told you so. And I know we're going to talk game four in a second, but you knew coming in, that Tampa is just as motivated as Montreal was. Tampa got to race the cup great, but they did it in a bubble. Now they have a chance of doing it at home in front of their fans, in front of people. So if you're telling me they're not motivated to do that, you're, you're sorely mistaken. I think Tampa hit their stride against the Islanders because they knew playing Montreal was kind of like playing the Islanders. Not a lot of offense, but they play a team game, a disciplined game. And Tampa is showing that they can, you know, they, they've out hit Montreal in every game so far. So, you know, what else can you say? But uh, I told you so. This might be the worst Stanley Cup final since 98, Washington, and Detroit. That's, all, that's, all, that's as far back as I'll go in terms of how bad this final was. That, that was an ugly final. Although, I got to say, the year after, the Buffalo-Dallas was not a masterpiece by any stretch no. of the imagination. Good point. You know, you kind of brought up what I was going to bring up is that, you know, first of all, I was surprised that, Tampa is actually that the bigger, heavier team. I, that was the one shocking thing about the, uh, and they are they can play a lot of styles. Um, their depth scoring. I mean, Steven Stamkos. I feel like he's been kind of re- uh, reserved to a almost like a grinding role, like just get the puck deep, just be responsible defensively. It's unbelievable that a team has that much depth, that much depth scoring that they can turn that guy into like a just be responsible guy. But you know, he's playing on a second line. Yeah, I mean he's playing and he's playing with Sorelli and you know that's a, that's a that's a heck of a line that they got going there. But they're just kind of playing like the grinder, like they're they're kind of getting the they're, they're playing gritty. It's crazy. But you touched on something that I we didn't talk about before the series, but I was thinking about it. Tampa Bay kind of had a big advantage in this series because they came off of playing the Islanders. I mean, if I were to describe the Islanders, it would be hardworking, tough, gritty, good D, good goaltending, and average forward talent which is basically the exact same as the Montreal Canadiens. I mean, that that's – they basically had a, a seven-game preview of how to play against a team like Montreal in terms of playing the Islanders. And the Islanders was a tough – it was a tough series. I thought it might have worn them down. It almost has helped them in this series because they've looked really good. They haven't – it seems like they haven't changed their style at all. They're, they're, from, from the first puck drop in game one, they haven't taken a step back. They've been going back at Montreal – and I thought Montreal would be, would kind of be tough to play against for, for Tampa. They're showing that you, you want to play tough, we'll play tough. You want to play skilled, we'll play skilled. Whatever you want to do, we'll, we'll do. We're, we're fine. Whatever you guys want to do. So I, I think they had a real big advantage playing the Islanders. I, I think it was not talked about enough. And, and you want to watch a power play? Oh, my goodness. Oh. <laughs> it's the, 
you you can know where the you can know where the puck is going because obviously they're trying to use the uh, the braiding point uh, bou- oh, uh, uh, bump. bumper pass to the yeah. middle, but Point can shoot, Stamkos can shoot, Kucherov can definitely shoot, Hedman can shoot, and Sorelli doesn't have to shoot. <laughs> guy in front of the net for Kalorn. That's four shooters on a five on a, on a five man power play. You started to see where I'm going with this, yeah. Kyle. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Like that's how you utilize, <laughs> you know, your 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 guns, right? So, you know, it's just Tampa just does everything right. You know, like it's just they're 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 they play the way their lines are constructed. They actually have different um, setups the way their lines are constructed. And what I love about them too, man, they start. They're in your face at the puck drop, and they're. Uh, they're they're quick into the game. They're quick with their lines, and they don't line match. If you notice, they do not line match, and I love that about John Cooper. When a coach shows confidence in all four lines, that team gives it to you right back, and uh, you know that just shows the mark of, of a great team. Lastly, I'll, I'll say about them because I don't want this to be Tampa Bay Appreciation Day. Their defense, if you notice, their pairings are not one, two, three, four. They do it based on, um, it's like uh, Victor Hedman plays with Jan Ruda. Jan Ruda was a, a nobody in Chicago, mm-hmm. but he's a nice compliment to Victor Hedman. Whereas McDonough will play with Cernak. Cernak was a throw-in from the LA Kings, mm-hmm. but now it's turned into a, you know, a, a pretty good top four defenseman. Good player. You know? And then, then, then you have Savard and Sergachev. <laughs> but then the interchange, it's an interchangeable top yeah. six. They rarely play like they're they're always changing the pairings. It, it's like no matter where you go, there's no weakness here, and they're not going anywhere. They're not going anywhere for a while, um, unless you know somehow Breezewa tells uh, Stan Coast that your back hurts for another eight months. You might want to <laughs> come back yeah. in April this year, right? So, anyways, what do you, uh, Rob? Go ahead, chime in here. What do you uh, what do you think? Yeah, it's it, Tampa is, you know, there's there's the old saying in Moneyball: adapt or die. I mean, they're adaptable. You, yeah. Whatever you want to do, we're cool. We'll play it that way. I, Chernak, I can't believe he was a throw into a deal. I remember watching him at the juniors. Uh, he played for Slovakia, I believe. He's Slovakian. And I was watching him, and they had two good defensemen. And I was like, man, I really like this Chernak kid. And, of course, Tampa finds him. Of course, Tampa is able to. It's unbelievable. I would love to watch them put a power play of the Leafs and Tampa, put it side by side and just watch the differences just to see how, like, that's what a power play is supposed to look like. Like everybody thinks that the Leafs have talent. So they know how to run a power play. It takes, it, it's not just talent. You yeah. know, it, it's partly between the ears. I think my favorite tweet of the night though, was I believe I can't remember who liked it, but it was like, they were complimenting, um, taking a uh, cock and Yemi out. And it's like, Oh, cock and Yemi. T- him being out was the reason that the uh, the lightning hit four or five posts, and that uh, <laughs> he was the guy that caused it. What a what a coaching move! And then Braden Point, like that that Braden Point off the the post and the power play. That's why can't the Leafs do that? I'm sitting there going, Marner and Matthews can't do that. I, it doesn't. Yeah. You know, I, I I saw a tweet with that. I think it was from Jack Hang, um, and uh, he's he's you know worked for the Marlies and Leafs, and they're saying, well, you know, every, every, the power play runs through Kucherov. But Kucherov has an amazing ability. They call it a slingshot, but like once he gets the pass, it's almost like a one-time slingshot mm-hmm. pass. And they're like, you know, how come Marner can't do that? He actually he can't do that. And there was a clip of him trying to do it. And Marner double clutches, so it gives the the box or the diamond enough time that that double clutch, knowing that that puck is going to Matthews. Whereas Kucherov already know where that puck is going even before he gets it. Mm-hmm. So the whole point of that was they're running it through Kucherov because he can't. Is Marner the right guy to be running that power play because he doesn't have the skill set maybe that Kucherov does maybe adapt, like you say, and run different plays? Leafs yeah. or not. I think Tampa that's has the, two or three set plays. That's the thing is that it's not even like can you do it. It's just give a team a different look every once in a while. Exactly. We've, we've pumped Tampa's tires enough. I would love to pump the Montreal Canadiens a little bit here. Um they're fans, man. <laughs> I've been I've been hard on I've been hard on the Habs. And if it wasn't the Habs, I'd be rooting for this team to come back from 3-0 just against the evil Tampa Bay cheating. They're cheating. It's not clever. This is not cap circumvention. This is cheating. 
the cheating Tampa Bay Lightning. If it wasn't Montreal, I would be cheering for them to come back and win this series. But I got to give the fans a lot of credit, man. The energy that they're bringing down 3 nothing. Can you imagine if this team was up 3 nothing? I don't think that city would still be standing today. They are going nuts down 3 nothing. So the fans have just I, – I can't give enough respect. And I'll tell you, I don't know how many people they have in that in that crowd, but it's more electric than any Leaf game I've seen in, in, oh, in a long time. And, and, and listen, they say they have 5,000. I ain't buying they got 5,000. But whatever it is, they ain't at full capacity. And it looks like a rock in time. Even outside, it looks like Jurassic Park out there. Credit to those fans. They, like, passionate as can be. But before we get out of here, give us, you know, down 3 nothing. This has happened. I don't think it's ever happened in the NHL. Or it's happened once in the NHL. No? Or twice. I uh, believe Philly yeah. did it to Boston a few years ago. 10 years ago. 2010. It happened actually not too long ago. I think I think it was, uh, no, e- even later than that. Uh, really? Well, I got I got to go to my research. Yeah, I think and I think it was Boston. I know well, you're right. The, the Boston Philly. I think it was Boston Philly. Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe, maybe is it that is is there any chance? How what chance are you giving the habitant of coming back in this series? You can't say zero. <laughs> because they they they've shown three one before, so you got to give them that. If Tampa doesn't close this out at home, you got to fly back to Montreal. That's uh, yeah, it's all. That right. is no bueno. So with that being said, I'll be fair. I'm going to give Montreal a twenty five percent chance of doing this. I'm going. I'm going less, just because. With most series, I feel Carey Price is the better goalie. I don't know if he's the better goalie in this series. I'm just watching Vasilevsky. He looks big and strong. and He's not, but I think with everything going well with Montreal, like breaks and luck, mm-hmm. you know, you just got this feeling that, like look at the other night, Hedman took point, took that shot and point took that shot off his knee. <laughs> you know, who's to say that point doesn't suit up next game because of inflammation yeah. or maybe Kucherov gets hurt again. Like you can just see one of those things happen, a momentum shift. I can so I can see that happening. That that's Montreal mm. in a nutshell. That's the, why it's like I'm getting a little nervous. Not that nervous. I'm like, okay, you know, Tampa's got a packed house coming home. But you know, we've seen it. it Montreal could be a team of destiny, right? I give I would give them a zero percent chance, or or just slightly above zero, if it was a two three two format. If next game was in Montreal, yeah, and I'm saying Tampa's got two to close that at home, I'm cool. If Montreal wins next game. Now they're coming back. That crowd is going to be out of bounds for game six. And then if you win game six, I mean, game seven, you never know. You know, I, I, I'm glad you were, just for me, the last thing here is how awesome is it, though, watching two divisional teams play? Like as bad as the quality of hockey has been, yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, very bad. You know, <laughs> I, I do like the concept of two divisional teams playing in a Stanley Cup final. Um, and I'm hoping the NHL looks at this at some point to say, listen, you know, it, it, it's a way of investing a, a rivalry back into, you know, the two, I don't say best, the two teams in the end playing for the cup should be, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter where they're from. Can you imagine Detroit, Colorado, 96 as a oh, cup final? My word. It was, a, like, it, it was the cup final. Let's be honest. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that, that was so I think I, that's actually one. Uh, it's funny you put out uh, somebody put out a tweet. You know, if Gary Bettman was fired and you were the GM, you know, what rule would you put in place? That's the first thing for me would be one day you see them one to sixteen, and the, you know, who's ever left at the end, regardless of where they're from, because they just showed Montreal traveling to Vegas in a semifinal and vice versa. It wasn't ideal, but they had to do it. So mm-hmm. they just set the precedence. I'd love to see that moving forward. I, I kind of liked – see, I liked it before when – I liked, it, like, uh, baseball when they had the NL and the AL. They never played each other. So it was like the finals was the first time we got to see the best of the NL versus the best of the AL. I like that in hockey too, but seeing as you got they're, they're playing every team, yeah, I, I don't, I'm not opposed to two division. If they're the two best teams, isn't that what you want, the two best teams in your final? Yeah. I'm, I'm not yeah. a big fan of interleague play anyways. But yeah. Well, on that note, like – Smash, subscribe, all that good jazz. Keep it coming, guys. Keep it coming. We love it. Getting sick and tired of saying it, but 
<laughs> you have to. <laughs> yeah. All right, buddy. Well.